Dear friend, if you live long enough, if the Lord Jesus doesn't come back before in the next few years, you'll go the way of all the earth. You'll go the way of the flesh. The thing that is most definite about your life on this earth, you're going to die. I know Satan's got you convinced that you'll live forever. I know he's got you convinced that there is no, there's no, nothing to worry about. You've got all this life. You're going to, you're a young person. You're never going to die. But I'm going to tell you something. Young people die. Old people die. Sick people die. Well people die. Death stalks every one of us. He's called the Grim Reaper. We don't know from one day to the next if we're going to be here tomorrow. But there's one thing I know for certain. It doesn't matter if tomorrow comes. Christ is going to come again. And I know whom I have believed. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Your Bible says this. Deuteronomy 10, 14. The scripture says, Behold. The heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. The earth also with all that therein is. Boy, I can't imagine what heaven's going to be like. But I do know this. I do know that I am much closer to heaven now than I was just a few years ago. And I know that the earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. I have a building of God not made with hands eternal in the heavens i know whom i have believed and i'm persuaded he's able to keep that which i've committed to him against that day i know that i've passed from death into life i know that i'm not what i used to be i know in whom i have believed i know these things today and nobody can take them away from me heaven is as surely my home as I stand before you this morning and open the Bible and preach the Word of God. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse 16, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Do you understand there's not a one of us in this house today that can get a full grasp of what the Bible talks about in eternity. But I want you to know that your little short life, and my little short life has been 70 years, but it's passed like a vapor. My little 70 years on this earth, I can't believe how quickly I got to this age. And some of you think, well, I got all this time in front of me. Wake up. You'll be where I am before you know it. And there are those in our house today that are over their 90s. And I'd say they'd say the same thing to you. That it just turn around once or twice and I'm 90 years old. What happened to my lifetime? It just fleeting. And that's what the Bible said. What is your life but a vapor? It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. That is this life. The Apostle Paul said this though. He said that our light affliction, which is but for a moment. So you say, preacher, are you telling me that chemotherapy and dialysis and surgery and joint replacement and oxygen canisters and wheelchairs and crutches and cancer and heart failure and all of the other maladies that fall to fall the human flesh are light afflictions? Yes. And here's why I say it, because it's just here now and will be over with soon. It's just for a little while, because compare that with the glory that shall be revealed. The Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter said it this way. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Peter said it this way. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. I'm going to see his glory. Peter said it again. He said, the elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. But if you've got the Holy Ghost today, and if you're born again, you do. If you're true, truly born again by the grace of God, you've got glory in your soul. That glory in your soul is not a made-up thing. It's not a fabrication. It's a reality. 
If you've ever had the Holy Ghost move in your heart, you know what I'm talking about today with the glory of God. There is glory in my soul. There are times in my soul when I rejoice that there's nothing around me to rejoice about. There are times in my soul that I'm singing when all around me is nothing but death. You don't live by external. You don't live by being pumped up from the outside. You've got a well inside you that'll never run dry. You've got a spring springing up inside you that is the life eternal. You've got the power of God living down inside your soul and nothing can change that if you have the glory that I'm talking about today. I don't have to tell you there is something inside you that calls for heaven, that yearns for Christ, that reaches beyond this veil of tears and rolls back that scroll and you can see into the heaven of heavens that he talks about in Deuteronomy. Yes! Sir, I was not made and I was not saved for this world. I came from above for the glory that's inside me did not originate here. It originated in the very presence and power of Almighty God. Can you imagine a land of singing, a land of no pain, a land of no sorrow that it talks about in Revelation chapter number 21. He talks about in Revelation, he said, there is no pain, there is no sorrow, there is no, none of this anymore. The former things are passed away. The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will once again be with men. How he looks forward to that day, and how I do too. To live with him forever, to enjoy him forever. One day you'll grab that mother that prayed for you and read the Bible to you, is waiting on you in heaven, you'll grab her. Say hallelujah to God. We're here. We're here. We made it. <laughs> or you'll grab that wife or that husband so dear to you and take hold of them by the hand and say, now let's walk on into his presence. Or that little girl or that little boy that you're.